Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Type Make Your Logo channel. Today we have a 2013 Ford F-150 with a 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine in it that has, you guessed it, a PO299 underboost condition, which is very common across all of Ford's EcoBoost engines, but it's really common on the Ford F-150 with the 3.5 liter GTDI engine in it. Now the turbos were a common failure, 2011 and 12 uh, was the first years for the engine. Uh, 2013 and newer, they received a redesigned turbo that doesn't fail as often, but of course can still fail. Uh, but there's a lot of items you wanna pre-check, a lot of uh, visuals you wanna do, and a few basic checks you wanna do before you just condemn those turbos. So today we're gonna walk you through all the pre-checks that I do when this code comes in to try to catch and see where that leak is at in the system causing the underboost condition. Let's get to it. All right, here we go. So the very first thing you want to do is open your hood and perform a good visual inspection of all turbo base components under the hood. There's a lot of them that can fail, get knocked loose, or be installed wrong by whoever was working under the hood last. It happens all the time. So you want to check all these different components, make sure they're okay before you start going after expensive turbos. So once the hood is open, we can look at the charge air cooler first, right here. You wanna look at the side tanks on here. I see them crack just like on a radiator and cause a boost pressure leak. Even if you cannot see a crack, I know it's kinda of hard to get down in here and look, you wanna look for oil moisture all down the side here because when the boost pressure comes out, it drags the oil out with it, it's a good telltale. When we're down here, what you want to do is look at this big opening in the bumper right here. It's just air rushing in, right, to, to cool off the cooler. Well, guess what comes with it? Road debris. So as I see these damaged all the time because it's right down here, low to the ground. So you want to check all your tubes going across and your fins. And again, even if you don't see any actual damage on here, you want to look for that oil moisture all over the place, indicating there is an actual leak. When we're down here, what we can do is go underneath the vehicle and just pull off this little shield right here and we can get a good visual of the back side of the charge air cooler. So let's start on this side over here, the hot side. These are the two tubes coming from each of the turbos and it's hot air coming in for the cooler to cool and then comes out the other side nice and cool. So these tubes are under pressure, of course, and they're carrying pressure, uh, pressurized air and oil. And I see these clamps for whatever reason, I see them loose all the time. These tubes are coming off other repairs or whatever, and I see these leaking and loose all the time. So make sure these clamps are, are tight on here. Now, as far as the boots on here, um, these boots don't fail too often. You see there's a little, little shiny, a little bit of oil moisture on them. That's perfectly fine. When they're dripping oil, then you know if there's a big enough leak in them uh, that you wanna change them out, these couplers on here. Coming over to the cool air side of the charge air cooler, um, this is the outlet duct down here, and generally these are okay, the O-ring in here is fine, everything is good, uh, just do a good visual over here. Now in the 2013 and newer models, they have this little like uh, resonator right here, and a tube that goes out to the air intake that is part of the blow off valve system on here. So the other thing that I see fail all the time is these uh, blow off valves right here. There's a diaphragm that splits on them and causes a boost pressure leak, usually four to eight PSI, depending on your throttle input on there. Uh, and these can definitely set a code. Okay, so this one uh, actually it failed on this vehicle and so did the charger cooler. Uh, so we're gonna show you on the bench what to look for exactly. Let's go up top and check that out. Okay, so up top here, it gets a little more interesting. You start seeing all these different components in the system here, you see it's very complex. So once the uh, engine cover, appearance cover is off and out of the way, put your cap back on, um, we can look at all these different pieces that control the turbos and of course the outlets of the turbo and the air coming into the turbo. So it starts here with the air coming in, the filtered air, so you make sure your air filter is not clogged. Uh, you want to come past here, clean this sensor right here. Then the air just simply travels over to each one of the turbos, splits off, and feeds them so they can uh, boost it. So you want to make sure all these different uh, clamps on here are tight. This one's kind of hard to get to. So I see those loose all the time. See, I get back there, see it kind of right there. Uh, make sure all these different uh, hoses for the purge valve right here are connected. You can see them. Just look at all these different connections on here. 
This right here is the actual boost pressure sensor and these get oil soaked. You wanna clean, take it out and clean that. Uh, also, this is the map sensor. Those two are primary inputs for charge air pressure and you wanna make sure that, that one's clean also. It can get carboned up and oiled up on there. Now this is the wastegate control solenoid right here and there's a bunch of tubes coming to it, both vacuum and pressure lines and you wanna make sure that they're all intact. So he's gonna follow lines out. You can see them there and there and of course on the other side. Um, these generally don't fail. I don't see them fail too often. Uh, but they can definitely fail. If they fail, it's probably either a constant or they could even be intermittent, I guess. But usually it's a constant failure on there. The other thing you want to look for is the tube that goes down to control the actual wastegate on there. Make sure it's okay all the way up. Usually these lines are all glued together on here, so they don't just pop off unless someone's been in here uh, manhandling them. The other thing you want to look at is these these other these silicone couplers right here. There's one top and bottom uh, for the air inlet and the pressurized air coming out of the actual turbos. So those, again, it's kind of hard to get to the clamps and see them. Uh, so I see those uh, either not installed all the way on or the, the clamps loose on there. And you want to make sure they're okay. So I think this clamp right here is just a, a solid clamp. You cannot take off, so that's usually okay. Uh, but this one down here is a regular worm drive clamp. You can see both of them right there. So make sure they're pushed all the way onto the turbo and that their, um, their clamps are tight. And of course, oil moisture is fine, uh, but dripping oil all over the place is not okay. So you can get a better visual of that over here. On the passenger side, you can see them through the, uh, through the fender liner. See them right there? So you can get access to the clamps and make sure they're tight. See they're nice and dry like that? That's how they should be, okay? So the other thing we want to check is uh, the wastegates themselves, okay? You can see they're down. Let's see this side, probably be a better visual. You can see the wastegate down in here. You know, the actuators up here, the diaphragms can fail on these. That's the most common failure. Uh, but I've also seen uh, the actual linkage on here get loose and cause a rattle. And then the wastegate flapper inside uh, get really loose and then not seal up so it's constantly bypassing even when it's uh, supposed to be closed on there. So the one thing you can do with these, and it usually just pulls right off of here, pull a line off, put it to the side, and then the best way to do this is use a vacuum gauge like this that can also go to pressure. You can see it right there. And we're simply going to put a piece of line on there on that diaphragm. And on the, the F-150s, the, the wastegate is pressure-based, uh, whereas most of the other EcoBoost engines are vacuum-based, okay? So we want pressure for the F-150. So what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna pump it up and mm, around three to five PSI or so, that gauge should start to move and around 15 or so, 18 uh, PSI, that gauge should be fully open. So we're just gonna show you uh, how it should look on here. So I'm pumping it um, at five PSI right now. Can you see it moving? We're at 13. So when I put the pressure in there, then sit there at max pressure, let's say 18, and make sure it doesn't bleed off. Make sure that diaphragm inside the wastegate actuator is okay. And then we want to do is release the pressure and watch that wastegate come back. It should be super smooth like that. Let's do it again. Right there, start moving is around five PSI or so, six. And now we're constantly moving. See, so you're constantly moving, constantly moving. And we're about 15 right now. Moving, moving, moving. And again, we'll release it. See how it comes back nice and smooth like that? indicating there's no binding in there. So these, as of right now, pass. Both sides are tested the same exact way. You can see it right there, it's pretty accessible. The other indicator for the turbos be failing, uh, like I said, 11 and 12s were really common, uh, is a rattle in the wastegates, uh, any kind of screeching or scratching noises indicating there's contact with the housings inside of there, uh, would indicate a failure and of course, excessive oil uh, being drawn through the system on there. 
But yeah, all these visuals and, and quick pressure tests of the diaphragms and stuff like that are is what you want to do before you just go after the turbos on there. You got to make sure the rest of the system, the control side, the cooling side, all that stuff is intact before you just go ex replace expensive turbos. So on this one right here, I'll show you a really good visual of what failed on this one. It's a 2013, 85,000 miles. Turbos are of course okay. Like I said, they're a little more reliable, uh, but the charger cooler had some damage to it on the other side. And then of course this blow off valve um, broke on here. So in the vehicle, while all this is in the vehicle, you can go underneath like we just showed you and go up to here. There's eight mil bolt here, eight mil bolt here and a connector, you disconnect it and then you just wiggle it and pull it off, okay? And then you want to look at this, this uh, reddish orange diaphragm inside of here and look for any kind of tears in the diaphragm that would cause a boost pressure leak. So you want to kind of spin it, spin it, spin it. See if we can get you in here. And eh, see if we can pull it out enough. You see that little right there? That's a tear in the diaphragm in there. So if this is all internal and sealed up by this O-ring right here, how's it going to be a pressure loss? Well, it's an internal leak, okay? So when this thing collapses to allow bypassing um, and, and blow off on there, the air comes out these four holes on here, okay? Past this diaphragm underneath here. So when it when you collapse it, they come out here. So of course, these holes and that hole right there that's torn in there, or it's just going to bypass air, bypass air internally. So this thing's basically on partially at all times, bypassing air from the cooler up and out through here through the resonator and back into the airstream instead of allowing it to come out this side and feed the engine. So you want to check that. Now, the one thing I want to warn you about is these bolts, they like to get rusty and break just about every time. Now, if you break it, no big deal. Pull it off, check it, see if it's torn or not. Uh, you probably want to change it anyways. When you go back in, you can put it in this direction right here and use these two holes. You can do that. The harness will reach. Uh, I'll just be at a weird angle here, but you can do that as an option. Okay. So this one, since it's broken, I changed the housing out on here. And these are kind of a pain. They come all the way up before the actual release. Uh, but I replaced the housing because it's a little hard to extract bolts out of plastic on there without melting everything. So the charger cooler, again, it looks fine on the outside here. I thought I saw some cracks in the back side here, the other side. Uh, I'll flip it around so you guys can see. But there was definitely a leak on the front side here. So this is the front side, okay? And you can see all the damage. So something big hit it a couple of different places. Uh, you can see there's definitely a hole right there. And you can see all that oil moisture. See how it's all wet right here compared to, let's say, dry up here? All that oil moisture? Yeah, that all makes sense, right? With all this, these, these hits right here. And then over here, there's a couple other ones that looks like they did not puncture through. Uh, but over here, they definitely did. And I thought there was a crack in here. Let me try to find it for you guys, show you how it looks. Um, no, not there. But anyways, so that was all the problems I found with the charger cooler. And then of course, the most common failure on these in 2013 and newer, blow off valve leaking and bypassing internally. It's one of those things you never check. Uh, so, but it's a really quick check to unbolt it, two 8 mil bolts, and then you can visually inspect it and bolt it back on if it's okay, and continue with your diagnosis. Anyway, I've ram rambled on enough, but I know this is a really common problem out there, and I want to show you guys what to check for, what's common, uh, before you just replace the turbos on these. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.